On to the Merlot stand now, folks, at Agritechnica 2025, where they have a feast of updates <laughs> and latest developments to show us. And to show us those developments, we've got Mr. Sean Groom from Merlot UK. So, Sean, we'll dive in. What's going on? What have you been up to? Well, we've been pretty busy, James. A uh, lot going on for us with our Turbo Farmer agricultural range. The Turbo Farmer range has been out since 2015, been very successful for Merlot across the UK and Ireland but we always keep evolving and part of that evolution we've got on here display at Agritechnica this year. We won't see it immediately come to the market, it's two years every Agritechnica, so we're showing updates that we'll see before the next Agritechnica. So most of this will hit the market next year in 2026. Right, so what so, we're seeing now is gonna get gradually phased out over those next year, yeah. two years. Yep, right. yep, so it, it won't come into the market until about the middle of next year, Yeah. but we're obviously using this as an opportunity to show what's coming down the yeah. line, particularly for the existing Merlot customers, but also those maybe users of other brands that can see our future direction with yeah, the product, yeah. so. That's it. Yeah. Get them convinced. Absolutely, it's <laughs> what it's all about. So, so. What, what have you been doing then? So uh, probably the biggest visual difference, if you recognize the Turbo Farmer, is that the plastic mud guards are going. Right. Uh, and we're going back to, and I don't want to use the phrase ring of steel, but in, invariably it's linked to Merlot, and yeah. it's difficult to get away from it. But those that remember uh, machines prior to 2015 will remember that Merlot had a ring of steel, a solid bar around the machine mm. that protected the machine. Uh, and listening to our customers, working with our customers in agriculture, uh, the overall demand was to see that back on the machines. Definitely, yeah. So we've reintroduced uh, this tubular uh, uh, bar concept around the machine here with steel plate mud guards, very robust, protection for the new LED headlights as well. So right. uh, we've got good protect protection there. Um, Integrates well to the machine, uh, right down here in front of the cab, so it stops any road spray up the windscreen, keeps yeah, yeah. the windscreen nice and clean. You know, let's face it, the UK, we're, we're not the driest and warmest climate, no, no, so no. mud and rain and so on is, 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 is well known to us. So big step direction change there, yeah. front and back, we've got those those. And this steel is a modular piece, so this chunky. Yep. That's bolt on. Bolt like on. Say, it's not like the full. Bolt on. So yeah. if the worst happens and you manage to do something serious this and you bend it, yeah. you can unbolt it and straighten it. That's it. At least you can get the gas on this. Not like plastic one guys. That's not going to happen, <laughs> is it? But going back, uh, 2015, why did you get rid of the original ring of steel and yep. lots of those plastic grey mug guards? So there was a couple of factors. The original ring of steel machine uh, was configured in a welded construction and that limited us with the future development of the product. So uh, by going to a modular construction, i.e. building the engine and the cab on separate production lines and bolting the product together, yeah. we couldn't continue with the entire ring of steel. Right. There was also a change in the road hole negation laws that yeah, meant we yeah. could no longer have a solid bar at the front of the machine. Even though the rest of the machine is a big solid lump. Absolutely. <laughs> so the ring of steel's back, it's different to what it was, but yeah. it now meets those, those rules, Yeah. which is the good news for all of us. So. Overall, that means aesthetically the machine looks quite different. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still a turbo farm a lot of people know and love. Um, a small design change on the top of the cab, as seen our falling object protection uh, grill on the top of the cab is, is been modified to give us a greater range of vision. Right. So when you look through the window in the top of the cab up to the boom now, you get a much clearer view of what you're doing at height. Right. Um, and again, it's a, it's a wider grill. Um, so you just got a better range of vision to see what's actually happening at the action end of the machine. Yeah. While we're at the cab here, another significant change is we've now got this wasted step design into the cab. All right, yeah. So, you know, if you're out on the farm, it's wet, it's cold, we're in welly boots, we're yeah. in leather boots, and you've got big size 10 feet like myself, you climb up here, the last thing you want to do is trip your foot on the edge of the cab, yeah. getting in or out. So we've, we've wasted out step into the floor and then we've got this piece that sits on the lower end of the door that when you close it seals the right. door up. So you're making a bit of a gradual stairway almost, Much, rather than a ladder. Yeah, it's, a, it's less yeah. vertical. That, that's, yeah, that's that, it, yeah. Less vertical, so uh, a lot easier transition to and from the cab. So in that respect, uh, a lot easier to get in and out of the machine. Yeah, there we go. All right. Any other touches, tweaks, changes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a nice little feature, of course, is uh, with the change in the mud guards. Uh, there'll be uh, potentially the option to mount a carrier here on the back mudguard. So if you've got lifting chains, straps, net wrap, you name it, 
Uh, that is room for a great big box on there. Isn't absolutely, it? <laughs> you know, because let's face it, no one really wants it in the cab with yeah. them. So there's room there to store whatever paraphernalia you want on the back of the machine. Yeah, that's uh, it. And then we, we kind of finish it off then with some nice LED lights at the back. Again, you know, we're all moving on in terms of the technology uh, and the, the reliability and the quality of the LED lights. You know, we're talking LED work lights now, we're talking LED lights front and back. Uh, it's what we all come to expect. Yeah. And then in terms of service accessibility, as you may know, the turbo farmers, our hydraulic valve chest actually sits here at the back of the machine. That's right, yeah. So it's always been very accessible, but the plate previously was bolted on completely rigidly. Mm. You'll notice now some hinges. We've made a door. We've made a door. <laughs> so if you do need to go in, mm. uh, you can simply undo these and swing the door open. You can access the valve chest for whatever reason in the back of the machine. Nice. So obviously in the UK, we, we tend to be all hydraulic pickup hitch here in, in Germany. This machine's displayed with the German Rockinger hitch. But for ourselves in the UK, the machines come in standard for agriculture with a hydraulic pickup and dual line hydraulic braking right. plus the two spool valves. Right. Um, so the machine's pretty well specced for, for our market. Um, so they're the sort of aesthetic changes that we'll see on the mid-range turbo farmers for next year. We are going to be adding a model, which is behind us here. Right. And these, sorry, just going back, these changes that we've just seen, just looked around, which models will they be implemented okay. on first? So we're going to see those on the TF42.7 and right. the TF38.10, which we've yep. got here. So those first are going to be the first two models. We've already got this styling on our new compact TF30.7, the six foot wide machine that we yeah. brought to the market last year. So that was the precursor to these going over. Um, and you'll see when we look at our hyper compact machine in a moment, we've also gone to this kind of mudguard on that. So right. it's, a, it's a gradual phase and rollout. But first yeah. up, 42.7, 38.10. Key models. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. So you said you got a new one. Yeah. So uh, 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 one one number more. This is a TF forty three point seven. So those of you that know Merlot probably know that our numbers do actually represent something in terms of capacity. <laughs> uh, so a forty three. It's a four point three ton seven meter machine. Right. Dead simple to to get your head around what the machine can do. Uh, and there's been some changes here in terms of obviously lift capacity, but also in terms of horsepower. Right. So this machine's gonna run at 146 horsepower from a stage five Perkins engine, Peterborough built Perkins engine. So you're on Perkins? We've been Perkins on the construction side of the business now for more than two years. Have you? Uh, right. We've used a good number of Perkins engines. Could you were, like with, with the TS, yeah. we've always like, Deutz, Deutz, Deutz. Deutz, yeah, and we still use Deutz yeah. in the smaller models. Right. Uh, but for our higher horsepower in ag uh, in this sector, we're predominantly Perkins now. Right. I had a good experience with the Perkins, really good torque characteristics from the engine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the Perkins engine has done as well. Uh, and the feedback from the customer base has been good. Still say got Deutz in some of those smaller uh, and more compact models in the range, but for, for this uh, particular unit, uh, we're going to Perkins direction. Right. So, um, but yeah, a slight increase in capacity, uh, an increase in tear out force. Uh, and we've slightly changed our position of the hydraulic crowd cylinder. You'll notice on the 3810 to your left, it's yeah. mounted to the side. Of course, On yeah. this 43.7, we've got a bigger head on the boom, and it's mounted centrally. It's in, it's in the swan neck. And it's got a knuckle. So the ram is not attached directly to the, the carriage. Right. So you've got the knuckle. So if you're crowded right back and you're scraping, yeah. you don't stand any chance of damaging the right. cylinder. And presumably with a knuckle, like a double joint effectively, yep. you'll get more travel as well. We get you? better better kinematics, better geometry. So right. dump angles are improved. So again, you know, the, 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 the sister model to this, the 42.7, very popular machine on mixed yeah. and arable farms across in, the UK. In terms of the size and the stature of this new 43.7, yep. is it very similar to a 42.7? Same, same footprint. Same, same footprint, same, footprint right. same chassis, different boom, different cylinders, different headstock, different, different engine. engine. Yep. So it's basically the 43 is a 42 on steroids. Absolutely. Right, love it. On the money. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean eventually the 42 is going to get dropped or? I, I don't think so because if I tell you in cur currently there are 11 car nation iterations of the 42.7. Right. So between the standard model, cab suspension, yeah. uh, CVT, CVtronic, um, we can offer various configurations of it. Because it's that volume seller right in the middle. You can do so, a bunch and, of specs. And this is why we see we need a slightly tweaked performance machine right. to meet the demands of that customer base. There we so, go. No one wants to load less grain per, per bucket load. <laughs> they want to load more. So, And then we sort of go to the other end of the, the spectrum yeah. where we've seen, I think, across the market, it's not just in the UK, but certainly across Europe, you know, manual handling is dead. 
let's be honest. No one wants to do it. No one wants no. to lug around anything by hand. You know, it, it's be, everything is becoming very mechanized. Mm. So at the very entry level of the market for us, we're going to introduce this uh, one and a half ton, five meter, what we call hyper compact machine. Right. So the TF 15.5. Uh, it's here as a concept, really. We, we probably won't see this machine until 2027, but as you can see, we're very well advanced with the, uh, with the design and the functionality, and it's on, very much on test at the moment. Yeah. You know, we see an application for this, of course, in farming, but we also see a bit of a crossover application for landscapers, fencing contractors, garden centers, Definitely, councils, we, and so on. We've you know? seen a bit of an influx of these model, this size yeah. of machine that you can throw on you know, a trailer. Absolutely. You took it on Arthur Williams trailer, you're not overloaded, yep. even with an attachment. So that's the whole idea that this will be trailer towable, yeah. three and a half tons total, gross with the trailer. Um, so it's a three cylinder, 35 horsepower engine. Um, what right, engine is this one? It's a Yanmar in this one. Right. Uh, as a concept now. As a concept, course, right. We're trying the Yanmar. We've had very good reports of it initially on test. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. Um, but again, uh, we're trying to make it it's functional. We've got a nice funky little plastic tray on the back for this one, <laughs> but still the steel bars, yeah, yeah. you know, which again, we're following this new design, sort of lineage of the machine. You've got the ability to have a service. We won't be able to have a hydraulic pickup hitch on this machine because it's just too low to the ground. But in reality, it's all about trying to keep the weight to a certain point that we can get it on that trailer and yeah, we can yeah. make it towable. Um, and to be fair, what are you going to be towing with this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, so, uh, Hydraulic and oil tanks on the back, very recognizable Merlot components. It's the same Merlot joysticks. If you're running multiple Merlot machines, you're jumping from one to the other, the controls are identical. Yeah, you got the commonality there. Absolutely. So, yeah, tidy little machine, isn't it? It is. I'm quite excited by it, really. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, for what is a very small machine, huge amount of interest. Yeah, so, yeah. that's it. Yep. Um, any more for any more, Sean? A final sort of final updates. One. If we go right to the big side of the agricultural range, so we've seen in the UK, particularly with the advent of biomass and, and renewables, a big demand for high capacity uh, telehandlers. And our 65.9 is our six and a half ton, nine meter telescopic handler, which has been uh, well received by those in that sort of bulk material market. We've got it here at the back of the stand. It's attracting a lot of interest this morning it's already. already. We've yeah. just started this yeah. morning. It's a, it's a machine that's equally popular here in Germany, um, you know, and if you're looking to uh, potentially increase your output, looking to load lorries quicker, you know, we could fit a four ton grain bucket on this machine. Right. You know, so seven or eight bucket loads and you filled an Arctic. Yeah. You know, uh, and this machine, we've updated the kinematics on the headstock. So oh, this so is inbuilt in the... Inbuilt yeah. again. So you'll see if you look at the back of the headstock here, we've got a knuckle arrangement. Um, so again, central ram for the crowd, uh, central ram for the crowd, you've got the knuckle arrangement there. And this is the he heavier ZM3, Merlot ZM3 headstock. Right. So it's a larger headstock for the higher capacity, still with the tack lock design, still with yeah. the hydraulic tack lock. Um, and again, we, you know, when you look at the lift cylinder on this machine, it's a significant it's piece of kit. That, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a telehandler, You've got frame leveling here on the machine as well. So, you know, we, if you're on uneven ground, you've got the ability to, to keep the machine on the level. Um, 170 horsepower. So no shortage of ponies under the bonnet. Where are the ponies coming from? FPT Iveco in FPT this case. FPT in this yeah, one, right. yeah, yeah, You yeah, are yeah. spreading the engine love, aren't you? Well, <laughs> we, we, you know. Or is that to keep them on the tall? <laughs> So, I mean, we famously make more than 90% of the components in our telehandlers ourselves. Yeah. The one thing we don't make is our engines. Um, you know, to be fair to the likes of FPT, Perkins and so on, you know, they're, they're making engines on a, on a grand scale. Yeah. But it's for us, it's trying to find the, the engine that with the torque characteristics, particularly for our hydrostatic drive systems that match the capacity of what we want to do. Yeah. Um, and we've used this, we use this 170 horsepower engine in some of our larger multi-farmers. We use it in the construction sector. We use it in our big rotating handlers as well. So again, it's, a num it's an engine we're using in relatively high yeah. volumes. It's known to you guys. It's isn't known it? to yeah. us. And importantly, it's known to a lot of the dealers out there as well, because it's in a lot of the tractors on the market as well. Yeah. Um, again, in the UK, we'd have full hydraulic pickup hitch services on the back here. This has also got on the back a pedestrian recognition system. Right. 
So uh, something that we've seen more, I suppose, the, the construction sector's driven the advent of this, yeah. where a lot of sites now demand that there is a detection system. And over here on the screen, if we, if we walk over here, we've actually got that camera mounted on the screen, it, oh, it will detect are. us. So what it does, uh, it works up to four meters away from the machine. So if I walk backwards, I'll go to amber uh, and then to green at some point. So keep going, Sean. Oh, I'm all in red this morning. <laughs> I'm over here. Let's go outside four meters. All right, go on. There, there we go. go. So I'm, I'm, I'm at a safe distance. As I get closer, I come into the danger zone. Uh, and then ultimately this system, you can set a parameter as an operator on this system to stop the machine moving. All right, without so, you intervening. So if you want a safe zone, say of two meters, yeah. you can set two meters into this. And when it reaches two meters, it will stop your direction of travel. It right. won't stop the engine, it'll just stop you moving. Right. So, uh, and for a lot of construction sites now in the UK, particularly, they're, they're demanding this as a standard feature on, on a lot of the products. But we also see an application in agriculture. Unfortunately, there's been 22 fatalities already this year in agriculture. It hasn't got a great reputation, has it? It hasn't. So we see some potential applications in, in on these bigger dairy units, there's a lot of staff kicking about, isn't there? A lot of staff, a lot of noise, a lot of things going mm. on. People are under pressure, diet feeders to load, yeah. trucks coming in and out, tractors moving, people walking around. And these eyes you know. machines, when they're running around, they're actually relatively quiet in terms of yeah. the background noise of the farm. Yep, yep, for sure. You, you can sneak up almost. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's our 65.9, let's say 170 horsepower. It's got the high flow hydraulics. This is a CS model as well with the cab suspension. So Merlot are the only manufacturer, telescopic handler manufacturer with full true cab suspension. So fully hydraulic suspension. It's right in its lowest position here for the show today. You've got yeah. a rocker switch on the dash. You can drop it down for ease of access. But when it's in its, uh, in its operating position, we've got uh, 90 uh, millimeters of movement, nine centimeters of movement. Uh, and of course, us in the UK, we sit against the ditch when we drive. We do, yeah. You know, whereas we over here in, in the Europe, potholes. <laughs> exactly. So cab suspension. If you're doing a lot of road work, give yeah. it a try because you, you honestly, it's, it makes all the you difference. You won't go back. Exactly. Yeah. There exactly. You go. Well, as ever, Sean. Yep. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, James. It's been absolutely yep. spot on. It's been, yep. it's, uh, yeah, it's been good to see what you guys are up to because yep. you genuinely got a lot going on. We try to. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's been good to see. So yeah, once again, thank you very much for that little whistle stop tour of the uh, the Merlot stand. Thanks for coming to see us.